since this has been broke, welcome home. It's good to see everyone, and I hope you feel as comfortable and happy uh, as is possible in these times of, of change. Um, one thing I will mention is while we're getting more people coming back, and that means the Sunday services are growing, we're going to commit to Saturday services remaining capped at 12 worshipers. We still have the team that's, that's leading the service, but we're going to cap at 12 worshipers. We'll add an 11 o'clock service as needed. Um, that provides that stepping stone. I'll try it. And maybe some people try it and still say, that's my edge. That's fine. Um, but it's, it's, it leaves an entry place for someone rather than having to jump right into a large service. So uh, we are committed to that. That means you're lucky if you contact me on Friday and there's still an opening. So earlier in the week is better. Um, but we will, we will adjust as needed because we, we want to be sure we meet the needs of everyone. We'll continue the recordings. We will continue a small service so that we meet everyone's needs as much as we possibly can. Okay, now the actual announcements. First, on the bulletin board inside the church entryway on the south side is a sign-up sheet for lawn mowing. Um, no matter what's going on outside in the world, the grass keeps growing. Um, and even some of you at home who may be uncomfortable coming and attending might be okay out in the field cutting the grass. So um, if, you, if that's you, give us a call and we'll, we'll write you in on the sign-up sheet so that we can spread the wealth of how much fun it is to cut the grass. Um, second, those of you who are here have received a, an eight and a half by 11 sign or sheet with your bulletin today. Those of you at home, if you haven't already done it, right underneath the uh, service folder for today, there's also an opportunity to download the flyer or the information. Um, and so take a look at that. Uh, if you will, I'm just going to kind of walk you through it. And I forgot my copy, but I think I can remember. Here we go. This is what it looks like. And it says reunion, although I've been calling it the re-dash union because we've been apart and we're coming back together. Not a family reunion from being apart from years or from all over the country, but a coming together as, uh, as we're able. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, we kind of were thinking well, it's vacation Bible school time, it's Country Heritage Day's time. Wait, Country Heritage Day's outside. If we do something outside, more people will be comfortable. We can keep distancing at whatever level someone is comfortable with. So, here's the plan. Three Sundays in July, the first three Sundays in July, we'll begin at 6 to start gathering. We'll, we'll probably eat around 6 to 6.30. We'll have food available for those who are comfortable that way. There will be hot dogs and they will be individually wrapped and properly prepared. Individual bags of chips and watermelon and at the end ice cream. But also we know that there will be some folks who prefer to bring their own food and that's perfectly fine too. Bring your own food, eat your own picnic food. No one will feel excluded from you. Um, also, if you want to bring a side dish for those who are interested to share, feel free to do that. Beans or something, that's great. Um, and it's just an opportunity for fellowship and fun, games, cards, whatever somebody wants to do, just sitting around the bonfire and talking. At that same time, for those three consecutive weeks, we'll do Vacation Bible School. It's going to be very freeform, very... Um, unstructured, we'll have a time for this and a time for that, but the idea is obviously we, we have kids of different ages, etc., but we're going to do it three consecutive Sundays rather than three or four consecutive days, uh, and that way we can be outdoors. We're planning, we hope, to have the tent so we can work under there. Um, that will include a Bible story, which I think I'll probably invite everybody to listen to because I want everybody to have to listen to me as much as possible. Um, but then also for the kids' games, um, there will be um, crafts and there will be music time. So, and adults are welcome to join in too. Um, we all like I am 
the C, I, and the CH come and join for that part. So take a look at this, call with any questions, but that begins next Sunday at 6. Why so fast? Because everything is happening fast now. So take a look at that. Um, Sunday school parents, you will also be receiving something specifically about the VBS component, you'll get that through that Facebook Messenger that we use to communicate with everyone. Um, so that's, look for that as well. Um, today in our service, we include a collect in commemoration of St. Irenaeus of Lyon. Who can tell me about it? Then I'll tell you about it. Um, Irenaeus was Bishop of Lyon in France. He became bishop in the year of our Lord, that's A.D. and the Domini, 177, a long time ago. It was a time of bloody persecution in the church. In fact, he became bishop because the previous bishop died in prison while others, he was waiting to be martyred and others were being killed uh, at the hand of the, uh, the Caesar. He also came at a time when there were terrible heresies affecting the church, possibly taking away the very basis of the gospel. Um, the one in particular that he stood against is called Gnosticism, that basically said the God who created this world was evil, and that he's a sub-God. It, it was a terrible heresy that was making great uh, strides. He wrote a piece called Against Heresies that pastors still read when they're going through seminary today, I know, because I read it. Anyway, um, we remember these uh, leaders of the church. You hear the prayers all the time. It's kind of nice to know that history in the same way that um, today we see people tearing down statues and losing our history of our country. Why does that matter? Because that's who we are. That's where we come from. Well, that's why we remember the saints. We see how God has been faithful with his people through time. And I think it's helpful for us to see that Irenaeus came in at a time when it didn't look like the church would survive. But God preserved them. That's a pretty good message for us. As we face all the challenges of today, God will preserve his people. God will preserve his church. It's important for us. The final announcement is a service one. Um, when we get to the end of the service, end of the recorded portion of the service, following that, we then transition to communion. You guys will see how that goes when that time comes. Um, but uh, when we get to that point, uh, the collect that's printed in the bulletin is incorrect. So we get right before that first benediction, uh, and before the closing hymn, the Son of God goes forth to war. There's a collect there that says, let us pray. That's not the collect I'm going to pray. Your part will stay the same. Amen. Can you handle that? Amen. Okay. So when it comes time for that, don't get thrown off that I'm doing something else. Just be ready to jump in with your amen. Otherwise, the service is printed in the bulletin, and between, uh, after the benediction, and when we stop the recording, then I will explain the communion distribution portion so that you'll be able to see how that works. Uh, but for now, the order of service is printed, and we begin with our opening hymn, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word.
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But if you there is forgiveness, therefore you are forgiven. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. In this time of silence, we consider our own sin and we confess our specific sins to God in our hearts. We pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, have, have mercy upon, upon us, forgive us our sins, sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Blessed are the people who who walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your face, who exalt in your name all the day, and in your righteousness are exalted. For in you are the glory of their strength. By your favor our Lord is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father. Your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you, O soul begotten, Father, Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Receive our heartfelt cry. Where are you in the power of our seeing at God's right hand on high? For you alone are holy. You only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You bring the Holy Spirit alone our Lord most high. In God the Father's glory. Amen. Our God and God. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you upheld your servant Irenaeus with strength to confess the truth against every blast of vain doctrine. By your mercy, Keep us steadfast in the true faith, 
that in constancy we may walk in peace on the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet, in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet, hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments, and how inscrutable His ways! For from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. To Him be glory forever. Amen. The Epistle from St. Paul's Letter to the Church in Rome. Romans chapter 7. Do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? Thus, a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say? that the law is sin by no means. If it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me, for sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. 
This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person, because he is a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple, Truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Maker of the universe, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated. <laughs>
catechism for this week is printed in our bulletin. What is the sixth petition of the Lord's Prayer? And what does this mean? The world and our sinful nature may not deceive us or mislead us into false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice. Although we are attacked by these things, we pray that we may finally overcome them and win the victory. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A few moments ago we spoke back and forth the introit. It's Latin, so it's not introit, it's introit. Did you notice the words you were saying? Or as we did the intro, did you just make the sounds? Because that's what the marks on the page said to do. That's not an accusation or an attack. I ask because I'm often guilty of doing that very thing, even while I'm leading. Some days I treat the intro like it's just something to fill the time while I go up the steps, move from one spot to the other. It's easy to do that. But the intro is actually from Psalms. This time from Psalm 89. That means the intro is actually God's word as much as what's read from here. It's God's message to us. So we should pay attention to the intro. And today's intro is a celebration song. In case you missed it, <laughs> listen again. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. We began by saying that God's love is so great, so unfailing, that it never ends. It has no limit. It is steadfast. It doesn't come and go. It's not high and low. It's constant, always, perpetual God's love. And in response to that in unchanging love of God, we, we say that there are two things we're going to do. First, we will praise God. That is, we will sing about his great deeds of salvation, and that's what we're doing in worship. Second, we say that we will tell this message to everyone else so that they know too says, I will make this known to all generations. And that means that we tell our children and our grandchildren. It means that we'll make sure that they're baptized and raised as churchgoers. The message will be like a ripple moving across the water from me to my descendants to my descendants. But the term generation doesn't just mean the way that we use it today where it's different groups born at different times, different ages. It also means people in our own era who are different from us in some way, other families, other nations. The ripple effect of my voice speaking about Jesus will reach not just down through time, but across the world to those people too, through my own inviting other people to church and through telling them about Jesus, and through my support for missionaries who carry the gospel to people that I will never meet. God's love is so great that we can't help but tell people about it. <clears throat> the next verses are about who we are as Christians. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who exalt in your name all the day and in your righteousness are exalted. These words celebrate the blessing of being God's people. We are the ones who know the festal shout. Festal means of the festival. We know a shout, a cheer, a cry of happiness that unbelievers do not know. The celebration, that's the entire gospel. 
But at the center of this festival, this festal shout, <clears throat> is the greatest of all our festivals, Easter. On Easter, the unbelievers wish one another a happy Easter. And sometimes we say that back to them, that's good. But we know a far greater Easter celebration greeting. We know one that shares our eternal blessing back and forth about why it really matters. You know the festal shout. Say it with me now. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. That is the festal shout of God's people. We know that God the Son has died for us and has risen to new life for us. And that in Him we live forever. And we are above and free from the fears of death and suffering in this world. We're not free that they will happen, but we are free from the fear of them. We're no longer in darkness and ignorance of unbelief and sin. Rather, we have the light of life, the light of God. That's the next line. More than that, we have, the psalm says, light of God's face. Not reflected, not hidden, not filtered through the, 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 uh, the curtain that was between God and the people in the, in the uh, tabernacle, in the temple. But the very light of God's faith, because we're not separated from God by veils or on, on the mountaintop clouds or walls on the outside of the temple. Those protected sinners from God's overpowering glory and holiness, but we've been forgiven. And because we've been forgiven, we've been given direct and constant access to God and all of his glory through Jesus our Lord. The Holy Spirit has removed the blinders of sin so that we can see God correctly in His Word. We can know His loving presence when the world tries to hide that love with trouble and temptations that we face every day. And because of that, we exalt in His name. E-X-U-L-T, exalt. That means to know and feel and show triumphant Joy, triumphant joy. Our joy is the joy of victory. Final, undebatable, cannot be taken from us victory. And it's in God's name that we have that victory. God's name that has been given to us as our own in baptism. We are victors over all the evils of the world. There's no denying that they're there, but we are victors over them even over the evils that we contribute. Because we wear God's name from our baptism. And our intro reminds us that we are exalted by God's righteousness. Not E-X-U-L-T, E-X-A-L-T. It means to lift up. We have been lifted up by God's righteousness. Lifted up from wallowing in the filth and muck of sin like pigs in a sty. Lifted up from our position of shame, covering our heads and covering our hearts as we confess how horrible our sins have been. Lifted up and forgiven. Not by our righteousness, not by saying, God, here I've made up for my sin. But by God's righteousness. This morning we said that the righteousness of God the Son has been draped over us. His perfect human life is given to us as a covering for our sins, so it's no longer exposed. And we are lifted up, lifted up from being God's enemies, to be His servants, and even more than that, lifted up to be God's sons and daughters. What a grand and happy song. What incredible good news of confidence and celebration we have. So why then did we pass by it with little or no notice? Could it be that we were distracted? Distracted by the unpleasant truths that we found in our other three readings. 
by the fact that like the people of Israel that Jeremiah was sent to, our own land is facing threats because of our unfaithfulness and sin. And that just as Jesus warned those 12 in the gospel, our lands and our values and even the church of Jesus Christ are being attacked and they're being attacked from within. He talked about separation within the family when he talked to them. It's falling apart by our own children and parents, by our own brothers and sisters who have rejected the gospel. And maybe we were distracted by the words that Paul gave to us in his letter to the Romans. Words that forbid us from using the gospel as an excuse to continue in our sins. Because we know that we do use the gospel that way. So we don't fight to weed the sins out of our lives. We just tell ourselves, but I'm forgiven, so it's okay. No big deal. Maybe we miss the joyful words of our intro it because we're focused on our separation, which is caused by this pandemic. Or maybe we're focused on loneliness or by our conflict that takes place in our personal lives. Maybe we were distracted by sick parents or sick children or sick spouses or sick selves in the midst of a sick world. Maybe we were just too distracted by all those troubles that Jesus warned us about. But it's because of our distraction that we need to hear and to confess and to believe and to shout out these words of triumph all the more. Our Lord has won the victory. Our Lord is risen from the grave. Christ is risen indeed. We have already won because Jesus has already won for us. We are simply bringing that victory to as many of God's enemies as possible so that they can learn the truth of our cry, that Christ's righteousness settles all our scores and is our eternal treasure, so that by learning that and believing it, they may be exalted by the righteousness of Jesus and like us be lifted up, being God's enemies no more, but becoming his children. We must be aware of the challenges around us. We don't bury our heads in the sand. The dangers that come with them are real. But our hearts and our minds and our souls and our voices and our faith must be zeroed in on one fact that trumps all of that. We are the people of the eternal God. In Christ, we are champions. That's why, in our intro, we confess, God is the glory of our strength, and by his favor, our horn is exalted. In Hebrew poetry, in fact, in much poetry, horn is a symbol that's used to mean power and strength. So we're saying that God is our strength. God is our strength because God's strength is on our side. Also, our shield and king belong to God. That is, our protection and our governance are in the hand of Christ, the Holy One of Israel, the king with the crown of thorns that's now a crown of glory in heaven is our king and protector. God protects us. God guides us. God rules us. God is our king now and forever. So even in the face of all those dangers around us, we still celebrate. We celebrate our great and unshakable victory because God has chosen to lift us, and by God's power, we can face and overcome all the challenges and fears of this world. And so we rejoice that as we exalt a victory cry at all times, because God's name is our name. God's victory is our victory. Amen. Now the peace of God that passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.
Let us pray. O most merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray you to rule and govern your church and all her pastors. Preserve her in the pure doctrine of your saving word. Defend her against all attacks. Protect her from all adversaries. Strengthen our faith and increase our love. Encourage and empower all faithful missionaries, including Reverend Dean Kavoris and Reverend Daniel Conrad. Bless our sister congregations in the Thumb Circuits, including especially Trinity Lutheran Church in Forestville. Grant health, wisdom, and integrity to those in authority over us, so that they would serve according to your will, maintaining righteousness and punishing evil. According to your gracious will, turn the hearts of our enemies and cause them to walk with us in humility and peace. Grant your Holy Spirit and grace to those in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. Bless especially those who suffer for the sake of your name and your word. Hear us on behalf of Kendall, Tim Bang, Melissa Spirit, Ron Gibbs, Dale Ricketts, Colleen Engelhart, Adam Wolf, Betty Fuller, Bill Reamer, Carrie Miller, Tom Lounsbury, John Kapp, Rachel Broker, and Jim Kelly, as well as those we name in our hearts. Give them courage to stand firm in their afflictions and patience to wait until the day of your deliverance. Preserve us from pestilence. Give to us favorable weather and cause the fruits of the earth to prosper. Lend your blessing to all honorable vocations and honest industry, that we may serve where our skills and abilities may be of good use. Bless the arts and music, that we may please you and be encouraged by all that is good, right, true, and beautiful. Give to all husbands and wives grace to live together in love and faithfulness. Bless the homes and families of your people, that they may be places where your name is honored and love is nurtured. Give your special grace to the widowed, the orphan, all mothers with child, the aged, and the infirm, that we may grant them comfort, aid, and protection. We ask for these things and everything else we need through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. 